it's said that the fourth industrial revolution will render humans useless. Computers, robots, and machines will become more efficient. AI will take over and take our place. The truth is, a single human brain is equivalent to thousands of supercomputers capable of solving problems computers never will. So, imagine what would happen if we had to link thousands of brains together. Just like nature creates a superior intelligence by forming flocks, schools, shoals, and swarms, we could create the brain of brains, the world's first ever human quantum computer. Well, what if we told you we already have? The deep state has merged the quantum computer with the sentient world simulation, parallel to planet Earth, with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child, this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. Right now, we're inside a computer program? Is it really so hard to believe? Remember, going back to the sentient world simulation, peer-reviewed white paper out of Purdue University in 2006, the program went live in 2007, describing humans as a node. And every person on the planet is represented in the computer software as a node, that's a data node, and given an avatar. What we're building in the computer databases represents real life and is both the information uh, that's necessary and sufficient to drive all DNA-based life forms. Mind transfer, mind copying, whole brain emulation, etc. for the purposes of uh, you know, creating a cognitive model of the victim's brain. Back to this article, I find it interesting that that's what's going on. That's what they're admitting. They're saying, hey, this Microns project is going straight to the source. We're not taking it from the global internet perspective. We're taking it from the brain itself. And eventually, those two things will merge. So the public announcement of a project like this is pretty telling about where we are. You are connected as an organic computer. I mean, this is this is one of the, the most um, conspir quote-unquote conspiratory theories that's been around for, for, for many, 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 many years, decades. But the reality is, is we're now facing the reality of that. It is no longer a conspiracy. The science is done and you will see this. And this is the next step on from the virtual reality goggles. And this is why it terrifies me. And this is why I'm trying to wake people up. It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. Essentially, it is a nano-thin coating of gold that allows for the imparting of digital information onto that third strand of DNA. It's able to speak to and decode the neurotransmitters in your brain, and that's how they're able to turn the brain of the mind control victim into their, you know, their very own visual, verbal, and auditive communication system. It takes time. They have to build a cognitive model. So the way we're going to do that is to build a kind of Microsoft for the brain, or Google for the brain where we're going to bring all the information that we have ever accumulated on the brain and bring it uploaded into this environment, organize it, because in some cases it's very messy and it's different scientists producing different data. We're going to organize it and then we're going to develop algorithms that connect all of this data. And uh, in conventional computing, in software, these things are often called neural nets. Uh, we have a hardware version up in our head, it's called our brain. Um, the chips that we build are architected like neural nets. There are hardware versions of neural nets. The bulk of our memories may be written into a kind of DNA hard drive. Now why do I say that? That's because we now know that DNA has incredible memory storage potential and information storage potential. In fact, there's a number of companies now that are looking at ways to write digital information into DNA because you know you would only need about a room full of DNA to record all of the digital data that exists today which is quite extraordinary. The ultimate aim would be to archive enough data on each individual to be able to make a computer model of everyone on the planet. And digital code as you know is a binary code ones and zeros and your genetic code 
is literally a four base code uh, within CGs and Ts. And we can now readily convert in between the two. And we can define life at its most basic level. So things that were a mystery 50, 60, 70 years ago, we understand completely. The new model regards DNA as a stable waveform of information that is not primarily acting through the molecular chemistry and composition, but through the oscillations and coherent acoustic and electromagnetic fields that the atoms and molecules create. An implication is that ultimately DNA could be transferred or transported, let us say teleported, immaterially and non-locally as a light or laser modulation. So the interface between the brain and the DNA would therefore be these biophotons. And it may well be that although the connectivity of the brain is where we are processing experiences, even utilizing recalled memories and writing new memories to the hard drive, that it's more like a RAM with a random access memory rather than being the hard drive. The DNA would be effectively our hard drive where all the bulk of the information we're not using is being written to. So it could be that in the future that we'll find a way to download people into DNA and move them across into other bodies. So this is an astonishing step forward in these kind of science fiction type ideas. The DNA world and the digital world are becoming rapidly interchangeable. So all of life as we know it can be sent as digital code through the internet or as an electromagnetic wave. And that is the electromagnetic linking between a genetically modified human comprised of third strand of DNA and the adiabatic quantum computer. So the reason why I want you to pay close attention when you're looking at those big black boxes is that inside those boxes is a point, a chip, upon which is happening something that has never happened in the history of the Earth. It's an engineering thing which has become a nexus point for all of these parallel realities. The shadows of all of these different universes intersect at a physical point inside of one of those boxes. You can think of it as a portal. So it's not like Star Trek teleportation where you get dematerialized and reappear. We could send your genetic code, but you'd reappear back as digital information. You can send DNA as ones and zeros and recapitulate it at the other end. So we've successfully, and so with DARPA, we built the synthetic genomics, the receiving unit. So the computer will have the ability to link to our DNA to be manipulated and controlled utilizing micro microwaves or other frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum from an external source. And once a frequency is emitted from a device and hits the target at the resonant frequency that that target's body, brain, and DNA are already resonating at, already vibrating at, they sync up, and there is, for lack of a better term, a frequency superhighway that is connected between the device and the targeted individual. Um, how many of you are having trouble with this notion of digital code going over the internet and the notion of something living that's being converted back and forth like that? I mean, do you have some sense of what is going on? Can I show of hands how many people have trouble grokking this idea? It's everybody over 30. Right. <laughs> you can send data and information and instructions to the targeted individual much in the same way that you can send data and instructions over fiber optic cables that power the internet, for example. And that's very much what's going on. They have unfortunately hacked the human mind, hacked the human brain and the human body and it is once that, that super highway of frequency is set up between the device and the targeted individual, they can send instructions. And those instructions ride on the wave of frequency that it was tuned into the individual's resonant frequency. And then they can send instructions that manipulate thoughts, manipulate emotions, manipulate behavior, and manipulate um, even the vitals and so forth, the heartbeat, the breathing pattern of the targeted individual.